but that's what we've been having to do. is happening people hey we got a great day today a little overcast much warmer this morning i'm so glad we finished with that cold weather anyway i hope so the lord has given us a good day to go fishing hey today we are on Heiko lake this is what i consider my home lake it's within about 40 minute drive of my house and i fish here a lot we were at kerr yesterday we saw some really nice crappies up on those spawning flats in the upper end and I have done the same thing here. I'm going to start in the upper end out on these flats and I'll show you real quick where kind of where we at and I'm going to look for those uh, big sows up here. Now I come through one deep hole right behind me and I saw some pretty large fish down around the 12 to 16 foot range and they could be crappy waiting to move up here on these flats. The water temps up here is 54 degrees. Yesterday was about 51 at Kerr Lake, so very similar conditions. Now, the one thing that we have to consider as a fisherman here at Heiko Lake, this is not a this is a shallow water lake. Very seldom you'll be in water deeper than 30 feet deep anywhere in the whole lake. And in this upper end, if you come in these upper ends, be extremely careful. They get extremely shallow fast. So you can see this is, uh, here's Heiko Lake, and you can see I have a lot of uh, underwater brush marked in the lake. And we are kind of, uh, again, just like at Kerr, we're in, this, we're in this upper arm of the lake here. It's a lot of flat, shallowy water up here. And again, since I know this lake, I can crank up and run down the lake and fish some other places. But if as a fisherman if you're trying to figure out a particular creek arm you've got to get in it and you've got to stay in it and figure it out so today we'll be fishing up this creek arm here and uh see if we could catch a fish little crappy. Now notice these crappy, they're very active. Uh, almost looks like they, they running around chasing, protecting a bed or something. I mean, they're all over the place. You get close to them with the live scope, they swim off. You can just sit there and look in with the live scope and you'll see fish swim into the screen. And uh, I almost wish I had my four uh, spider rigging rods to put out and just move along because fish a lot of fish up here, a lot of small fish. And uh, some fish are hitting at the lure, moving off. Uh, I did change and put, I did change that color to that electric chicken and they seem like they look at that a little bit better. And I may change several colors to see if I can get something that the fish want to re respond to a little better. But anyway, hey, let's go catch another fish. So as we look around today, I am going to go over my Garmin live scope settings. I know I've had some comments about those settings. I've had comments about, well, what do you do if you don't have the live scope? Well, I fished for a lot of years without some upgraded electronics, and the Garmin live scopes uh, allows me to see things that I've never seen before, even on my home lake. And here on my home lake, I've uh, spotted some anomalies on the bottom that I never knew was there. The live scope has shown me fish activity that I've never known that that actually existed uh, before and so but this will be the first spring I actually fish with it so I'm gonna go through my settings I'm not saying that this is how you should set yours up I'm gonna just say this may be a starting point for you everybody fishes different everybody needs different settings so hey guys stay with us and let's go catch a fish
I've been fishing up this bank right here. Doggone if I ain't catching nothing but bass. I caught one catfish. That's like the third bass I caught. Uh, the crappie are hitting short. Uh, I'm pitching up against the bank. This is probably eight or nine feet of water I'm in, and it's a lot of rocky uh, outcroppings, a lot of brush on this bank, and so I'm just pitching up against the bank. All out behind me on this flat, there's crappie everywhere, and they just scattered everywhere, but they're really, really spooky, so I decided to come over here to this bank line and just bump along the bank line, pitching back against the bank. It's fairly steep, and then it's letting the lure fall real slow, and uh, I've got a lot of short hits. I'm assuming that's crappie. That's kind of how they were doing out on the flat when I was vertical jigging and pitching to them. They were kind of hitting short. They were interested in the lure, but they just weren't eating, so... Hey guys, stick with us and let's go catch a fish. Well, that's a little better than that's a little better than average. Um, so to give you an update, I've came up this water's been running 12 to about 16 feet. And the crappie are staged. Uh, they're just scattered along. Some are up uh, about eight feet. Some are up in the water column. Some are on the bottom. I've seen a couple actually in brush, but I, I caught one of those and it was just a small fish. So they're scattered in these coves, just waiting on the water temperature to warm up just a little bit more. And uh, so what I'm doing, I'm just moving along the bank and I'm trying to pick the bigger signatures out. That was a little bit bigger signature. That was about a you know, about a 10 inch fish or so. And uh, I'm getting ready to move to this other side to see what we can pick up, so. All right, folks, look. See that stump right there? See that stump right here on the bottom? It is literally loaded with fish. I'm telling you, just loaded with fish. I don't think none of them is really big crappies, but it has got a lot of fish on it. We'll drop down on there again. All the way on the bottom. See all the fish? There's some above it, some around it, some down in it. Uh, when I came across the stump, it actually looked like it was actually moving. That's how many fish, see the, that's how many fish is on that stump there. See if we can get right down on top of it. I'm gonna fall a little short of it again. Just break apart in there. That's what that live scope will, that's what that live scope will help you do. It'll help you spot those places that you can see a fish coming out of there. There's a couple of fish. All right, well, real quick, like, let's uh, let's just take a look at uh, my settings. So let's just go back to the screen. Okay, so if you can, I hope you can see this. So I like to keep my depth range here on the left couple of feet lower so if it's 14 feet of water I like to keep it around 16 feet now you can set this on automatic but I particularly just like to do it manually this would be where your live scope is this would be directly under the boat and looking forward I got this set on at about 40 feet now to change the forward looking come in the menu forward looking you go down and sometimes when I'm just looking for crappy I'll go to 70 feet that means I'm looking out 70 feet watch the difference when I look out you see those signatures that pop up here all those are fish And that's, of course, that's the bank here. So that's the difference. I'm looking at a lot further. I don't see detail, but you see those little blips? That's fish out there. 
Now, if I'm just running and looking and I see a big one, then I have to come back and I'll go up. And I like 35 to 40 on my forward looking. I've got used to, I'm gonna set it on 40. I've got used to on 40 feet, I can identify a larger crappie than a, say, a smaller crappie. Uh, so that's the way I stay forward looking on 35 to 40 feet and I manually set my depth range. Now, I keep my gain on about 60 to 65. That's what I normally keep my gain on. So if you want to start doing some changing on your color screen, you go to Sonar Setup and the TVG, I'm sorry, TVG, yep, TVG is on off. You want that off. I set my noise rejection to high. And if you go into appearance, this is where you can change your color feel. I got mine on black emerald. Trails are off. Uh, bottom feel is off and I'm hiding my scroll history so if you go into your color scheme of course you can change it from of course that's copper and amber black emerald uh, I've used red I kind of I've gotten used to the black emerald so that's where I keep mine so that's kind of how I have mine set up I see uh, Here's your depth range here. You can put this on auto and it'll automatically correct. Sometimes I'll leave mine on auto. Most of the time I like to do it manually. If I'm fishing fairly shallow, I'll just change it. Uh, it becomes a little bit of a hassle sometimes, but, and, uh, but that's just how I keep mine set. Now that's just basic, that's my basic uh, live scope setup and everybody's a little bit different fortunately Garmin put in the live scope multiple settings for multiple different types of fishing but that's the way I have mine now one one important thing that you need to do is inside of this box right here in a ziploc bag I have a okay. notepad with all my settings TVG TVG off, my gain, color scheme. So I went through my settings and I wrote down all my settings. Because inevitably, something is going to get knocked off. You're going to change some settings while you're out fishing. And you're going to get frustrated because unless you use that thing every week and you get real familiar with uh, where everything is, sometimes you have to go into three layers to get things change so do yourself a favor make yourself a note card or some notes and leave it in your boat because if you get out here and the fish is biting or the fish is not biting you get frustrated and you're trying to do it and especially if you fish in the tournament you can't quite get it set and I know this from experience when we were in South Carolina I got the monkeying around with the gain and I got something off and I never I had it set, I couldn't even see my lure going down to the fish, much less actually seeing the fish, and I forgot what I had off. But do yourself a favor, after that, after I got it programmed like I wanted it, I wrote down all my settings and I keep it in my boat. Do yourself a favor, it'll save you some headache in the long run. Because it's tough to stand on top of your head, leaning down, looking at that, and setting all them, uh, making all them settings. All right, again. See if we can get a good signature on the fish. Get it right down. Now see how he reacted a lot better. Now he's a small fish. Now that one ate it like he's supposed to. Oh, uh, you know, that's a ten and a half inch crappie. We're not keeping fish today, but hey, that's a good crappie. That's a good crappie for Heiko Lake. You'll catch a lot of fish in Heiko from about nine and a half inches up to about 12 inches. That's 
pretty normal good size crappie. Um, I have caught them up to about 14 and a half. Never caught anything over 15, but not saying they're not here, but that's a good average crappie for, for Heiko Lake. Uh, that's a good eating size crappie. So that's what we've been having to do. Hey guys, uh, we're getting ready to get out of here. So if you come to Heiko Lake, what I've seen after I come down the lake, the fishing got much better. So I came in these big coves that had deep water coming off of the main channel, coming back into the cove. Fish are scattered anywhere from 16 up to about eight feet along these bank lines, still suspended off not spawning yet and uh, I just used my live scope moving up and down the cove fish reacted much better in the shallow water and up in they was extremely spooky they ran from just about every lure I threw to them uh, they ran from them some of these fish are still spooky here too but not as much so unfortunately we didn't get to zero in on those big sow crappies um, not sure what's going on with this overcast. I don't know what the barometric pressure is today, not sure. But anyway, uh, we didn't get in on those big sow crappies, but we did catch some decent Heiko Lake crappie, some around the 10 to 11 inch mark. So hey guys, fishing, the best is yet to come. In the next coming weeks, as this water temperature continues to warm up and these fish move up to the bank, this is my most favorite time of the year to fish. It's that mid-March to mid-April catch a lot of big crappy hey guys as always we appreciate all the support that you give for this that you give for this channel we appreciate you subscribing hey share this channel with someone if you know someone who likes to crappy fish we're going to be fishing all year long at least once a week hopefully twice a week i still work a full-time job and do this and uh really thinking about retiring doing this full-time I am eligible for retirement and uh, thinking about going and doing this YouTube channel uh, full-time not quite so sure yet uh, we'll just see how things go but anyway we appreciate you subscribing don't forget to hit that like button click the notification bell so you don't miss an episode of wildlife adventures and as always you remember it's a wildlife and I'll see you on the water